In a niche subsection of the niche hobby of pigeon fancying, people roll pigeons along the ground to compete for the longest distance. The rabbit hole, or should I say pigeon hole, of fancy pigeons on Wikipedia and the larger internet is massive, but has comparatively little on parlor rollers. If you even mention a roller, most people will think you're talking about the most popular aerial roller, the Birmingham roller. With little information and few leads, Google quickly led me to the website of Paul Gamino. What I found was a phenomenal back and forth for the world record, spanning several decades, countless pigeons and hundreds and hundreds of feet rolled, recounted in amazing detail by Gamino, a multi-record holder himself and often considered the GOAT. His website alone is a source of almost all of my information, and is perhaps the most comprehensive source on pro parlor rolling in existence. And yet no information exists on any of Gamino's peers, even after extensive web scraping through old links with the Wayback Machine. Bill Mustin, Kirk Millinor. Outside of Paul's website, none of these record holders have any footprint on the internet whatsoever. On a whim, I tried reaching out to some of these pigeon pros in search of information that exists nowhere else. And here is their story. What are parlor rollers and are they ethical? First, what is a parlor roller? Let's go through the motion of a show roller from the Del Mavera Pigeon Club. As described in detail in a 1974 Nature article by Entrican and Bryant, the roll itself is actually a series of backflips performed in rapid succession, with the pigeon maintaining the roll and generating a propulsive force using a series of strategic flaps with its wing. These aren't to be confused with parlor tumblers, which will do one or two flips and then stop. It's unknown exactly why pigeons roll, but one theory is that the closely related flying roller breeds, which perform the same somersaulting motion in the air, initially began tumbling as a defense mechanism to avoid prey. Flying rollers will often stall mid-air and drop 20 or 30 feet, and in the most extreme cases, will even hit the ground. These particular birds, called dive bomb pigeons or kamikaze pigeons, typically don't have a very long life expectancy. Parlor rollers specifically have been selectively bred to roll on the ground and can't survive in the wild, but it's really important to recognize that this rolling mechanism comes naturally to the birds. It's not something that's taught. I say this because a lot of people who don't know about parlor rollers have a tendency to call these birds abused, deformed, or even epileptic. But the fact is that parlor rollers, when given proper care, will fly until about nine months of age, and then will have a natural inclination to roll. These birds will roll, with or without us. For safety and comfort, parlors are only ever rolled on soft, grassy areas. The birds themselves aren't harmed, and in fact often seem to enjoy the motion, and owners deeply love and care for their birds. The Beginning Pigeon things in the U.S. generally fall under the NPA, the National Pigeon Association, but the parlor rolling scene in the U.S. seriously started with the APRN, the place for events and certified rollers. Certification meant rolling a pigeon more than 70 feet, a distance that fanciers often struggle to get. The hardest part is getting them to roll straight. Since distance is measured from start to finish, rollers will lose a lot of distance if they make turns, and will even lose distance if they make a full 180. A roller could roll 200 feet in a circle and it would count as basically zero. The scene was inexperienced, and at the time, there there weren't many certified rollers. The first record that I could find was held by the late great Norm McMurray. This was a roll of 95 feet 7 inches and stood until the landmark Pageant of Pigeons in November 1981. Oh, to be a fly on the wall at the Pageant of Pigeons. At the tournament, McMurray himself was in the lead with a 78-4, recall a very impressive roll at the time. But then, in an upset, the one and only Paul Gamino shattered the 100-foot barrier with the last roll of the day. The almond roller, named Priceless, rolled a phenomenal 128 feet 10 inches before her owner had to stop her from rolling into a parking lot. That day, Paul Gamino made history and shot to the top of the pigeon rolling scene. And just as quickly, he vanished. The end of the 20th century. With the 100-foot barrier toppled by Gamino, other big names in pigeon rolling spent the rest of the 20th century trading the world record and pushing their parlors even farther. McMurray took back the record in November of 1985, rolling an almond hen of his own 135 feet. At one point, Bill Mustin, an East Coast roller from Maryland nicknamed the Dominator, snatched the record with a 150-foot roll. And sometime later, Jay Trout, president of the APRA, rolled a record 178 feet 8 inches. But we do know that at the start of the 21st century, the distance to beat belonged to Kirk Millinor, a strong roller who rolled a 191-2 in November 2000. This record stood supreme over all the rolls in the 20th century, earning Millinor the title of the King of Pigeons. Entering the 21st century, it felt like the 200-foot barrier was just within reach, but just how many years would it take to topple it, and who would be the one to make the roll? Well, 2001 was a fine year for parlor rolling. At this point, just like the melee scene, parlor rolling concentrated into two pro groups, one on the East Coast, Jay Trout, Jeff Shriver, Terry Duez, Bill Mustin, and one out West, Paul 
Camino, Bob Nolan, Ron Caruso. And on both coasts, especially on the East Coast, all of the big names were making big moves. On July 1st, the first show in Maryland was taken by the dominator Bill Mustin with the 126.11. Then on September 15th, Dolly Kramer, one of a handful of great Ohio rollers, and sometimes called the Queen of Pigeons for her ability to edge out the competition, took a Fremont competition in her home state with a 101.5. Just a week later on September 22nd, Bill Mustin took another Maryland show with a 112.4. And just the very next day on the 23rd, Terry Duez took a show in Rochester, New York with a cool 83.10. Terry brought that momentum to his next show where he had three birds roll over 100 feet and one with an amazing 148.4. And then at the renowned Young Birds show in Kentucky, Dolly Kramer swept the top three spots, winning with a nice 95.11. But as winter settled in, Jay Trout took the distance to beat to another level at the White Rose Winter Show, rolling an absolutely staggering 171.6. The year finished off with one of the last major events of the season, the Pageant of Pigeons 2001, where Richard Wrangell's roll of 115 feet 3 inches stood above all the others. A remarkably documented and absolutely stellar season for pigeon rolling, but still without a roll that could overthrow Pigeon King Kirk Millinor and top the 200 foot barrier. That is, until the very last pigeon. 204 feet 2 inches. Exactly 20 years after Camino's Priceless broke the 100-foot barrier in 1981 with an upset, here today, exactly two decades later, at exactly the same show, the last pigeon of the show made history as the first pigeon to break the 200-foot barrier. Her owner and the new grand champion was a name we hadn't heard in 20 years, Paul Camino himself. The Golden Age. Over the next few years, parlor rolling hit its stride and the record just kept going up. The dominator Bill Mustin took back the record in January 2003 with a 261.7, and a year later, at the same show in Reading, Pennsylvania, he broke the 300-foot barrier with a 304.1. It had taken 20 years for parlor rollers to push the record from 100 feet to 200, and then only two and a half years to push the record from 200 feet to 300. What had changed? According to Dick Boone, it was a massive increase in our understanding of parlor rolling. What had started as a handful of guys scattered around the country had evolved into a club of 60 to 70 people, several of them now rolling for several decades. Owners improved their breeding practices, fed their pigeons better food, and generally gave better care to the high-maintenance parlor rollers. For example, when not on the field, owners house their birds in short, wide cages, with ample floor space to move around, but a height only just above the bird's head. This helps the birds feel secure, and also stops them from rolling around their pens where they might hurt themselves. Rolling practices themselves also improved as competitions gradually moved to softer, flatter locations. High school football fields, with their short grass and minimal obstructions, have become common venues. Moreover, at the beginning, it was standard practice to roll a bird as often as possible, presumably so that they could get more rolling experience. But owners were now learning that the exact opposite was true. Now, the moment a bird is locked in, typically considered a roll of about 30 feet, they won't roll again until competition. As Dick Boone recounts, you'd walk up with a dozen birds and you had no idea what they were going to do. A bird could roll 15 feet or 200 feet. You just didn't know. Compounding this uncertainty, the number of rolls per event also began to decrease. In the beginning, with only a few people rolling on average only 60 feet or so, rolls were quick and each pigeon rolled twice, sometimes even three times. Now, with more owners to roll and pigeons regularly rolling over 100 to 200 feet, each roll started to take a long time. And while the option to roll twice was always there, it wasn't uncommon for most pigeons to only roll once per event. It's funny, at many speedruns, new straps completely change the trajectory of a typical run, and runner optimization often leads to hurdles related to random elements in the game denoted RNG. In a way, roller optimization has led to a similar type of RNG. And clearly, as the record was changing, the entire sport of parlor rolling was changing right along with it. Paul Camino, New Heights, and the End of an Era. In January 2004, the same month that Bill Mustin broke the 300-foot barrier, Paul Camino hit his stride at a competition in his mother's hometown of Birmingham, Alabama. Paul reclaimed the world record for the third time with the roll of 320 feet 7 inches by an almond cock named Pete, the second record-setting pigeon, the first one being Betty, to be named after his longtime mentors and suppliers, Betty and Merrill Peters. Pete rolled the length of a football field before almost rolling out of an open gate and stopping after hitting a chain-link fence. Paul Camino allegedly has video of this Roll, which I'd love to see, but sadly haven't found. Camino made history again on March 27th when his pigeon, now called Mr. 381, rolled 381 feet and 9 inches. John Valencia, another strong roller, would later roll a 383 in November of that year. But not before May, when one Camino pigeon would roll a 428-2, and another, after nearly hitting a trash can, would roll a record-setting 662 feet 1 inch, stopping only after rolling up the grassy embankment at the edge of the field. 
According to Dick Boone, that's around the time when parlor rolling died down. The greatest names in the game all turned 70 and decided it was time to retire. Many of them sold all their birds, and with no young people in the sport to take the mantle, the APRA disbanded a few years ago. In just a few years since the legendary East Coast showings of 2001, a handful of men in Lancaster, California had absolutely skyrocketed the record. And now, Paul Gamino had rolled a role that people hadn't even dreamed of. Tech 62 won 6 atop Gamino's list of 50 longest rolls, and 2000 marks the latest update to the website and the end of my window into professional parlor rolling in the US. Even in the parlor rolling golden age, 662 won was an unimaginable roll. So with the great shawl retired, it seems that this number is here to stay. The length of two football fields, 662 feet, 1 inch. That's where the story ends, and when Paul Gamino can finally rest. Except that he never did. Today, Pigeon Rolling has essentially concentrated to a local scene in California, and Paul Gamino, who now owns about 800 to 900 parlors, continues to roll at big shows to this day. Since 2004, he and another guy from California have both rolled over a thousand feet a handful of times. Even though the records are much harder to trace, the rolling hasn't stopped. Just how far can a pigeon roll? Only time can tell.